So I've had quite a few requests to actually do a uh, short little video on uh, the uh, method that I use to solder on the uh, SMA connectors to this uh, semi-rigid coax. Now the semi-rigid coax itself, I've actually started to use that quite a lot in my builds. I actually, I really do like it. I prefer it over the uh, normal coax, but uh, you can't actually use it for all antennas and uh, all builds because sometimes you do need the more traditional coax depending on the design of the antenna but I have actually started using this as uh, if you are subscribing to my channel um, I've started to use it quite a lot over the uh, last year so I've got a method of uh, connecting the uh, SMA connectors to this and I don't think I've actually seen my method anywhere else and uh, it really is quite a simple method and it cuts down on the amount of uh, filing you have to do to tidy up the soldering around the SMA connector so it makes it really simple. So here's one that uh, I've already done and when I actually first started uh, soldering these on what I would do is do all the soldering with the uh, soldering iron and then uh, I'd either get the Dremel tool or a small file and uh, also a uh, sharp utility knife and go in there and try and tidy the uh, solder up a little bit try and get it all nice and smooth and uh, round all the way around there but uh, I found that uh, you know for actually soldering a uh, good joint on this to make sure that you've got all your solder all the way around the SMA connector and also you want it to slightly flow in between the uh, coax and the uh, SMA connector there so you've got a really good seal it was uh, quite tricky to actually uh, do it with the soldering iron and uh, each time I would do it sometimes I would uh, do quite a neat job but uh, other times I were having to spend quite a lot of time with the uh, file and a sharp utility knife cleaning it up afterwards so my uh, method is uh, a little bit different and as I say I don't think anybody else does this but it's uh, a really simple way of uh, actually connecting one of these uh, SMA connectors to the uh, semi-rigid coax. So I've gone ahead and I've prepared the uh, end of the coax here. I've cut away the uh, outer shield, the outer braid of the uh, coax and I've left uh, a length of the uh, inner core protruding from the uh, top here. Now when you're actually exposing the uh, inner core there you don't have to get your ruler out at that time but you want to make sure you leave enough exposed so you can cut it back to just exactly two millimeters protruding out the end. So next what I do I actually get a file or you can actually use a uh, Dremel with a sanding drum if you're really careful and uh, what I do is actually taper this now so I put quite a uh, sharp point on the end of this and that makes it a lot easier to uh, actually solder it into the uh, center pin on the SMA connector. So what I'm going to do now is put a uh, very small amount of solder to tin the uh, centre pin here. So I want to try and get as much as I can actually inside the pin. So get some heat to the uh, outside of the pin first and then gently feed in a small amount of solder in the inside of the pin there. So to solder the pin on then what I'm going to do is uh, place the point that we've actually sharpened up there on top of uh, the solder cup in this pin and uh, hold it there come in with the soldering iron at the side get that solder flowing and then push down now if you notice the pin it's not quite touching the uh, wood here that I'm using as a base at this moment in time because I want to get in with the soldering iron first uh, along the side of this pin get that solder flowing and then I can actually push down and uh, then it'll make contact with the uh, wood and we should hopefully have a good connection with the pin there so I'm just holding it on top of the pin now and you'll have to forgive me if it uh, looks a little bit shaky because I am working at quite a distance away to actually get the camera in as well so now I'm going to come in with my soldering iron at the side and apply heat and then I can push down and then we've got a really good soldered connection there with that pin and of course if there's uh, any residual uh, solder stuck on the side of the pin it's uh, easy to get a uh, small craft knife and just uh, cut that away now something else that I've come across when using this uh, coax is uh, depending on what you uh, use to actually cut this initially 
you can actually get folds of the uh, coax actually bending over this dielectric and coming very close to the uh, inner core of the coax so if uh, you get a little uh, craft knife like this and just uh, scrape it away and make sure that you uh, haven't got any hanging over here so you've got a nice clean cut with the uh, dielectric there and that inner core so next what you want to do is get your SMA connector and gently push it onto the uh, coax so it actually won't go in anymore and if you uh, got it cut off at exactly two millimeters initially then you should see that pin the uh, edge of that pin there line up quite nicely with the uh, edge of the dielectric there not protruding too far and not actually uh, stuck too far into the dielectric so I'm now going to use the soldering iron to flow some solder around here now to actually attach the SMA connector so I've actually got it angled uh, down so I've actually got gravity helping me as well to actually get the solder in between uh, the SMA connector and the coax there but I'm going to go around use the soldering iron to get some heat into the coax and the SMA connector and then just gently feed in solder as you work your way around and because I've got this away from me you've actually got a better view of this than I have so if I'm uh, a little bit shaky it's because the camera's in the way and then you can just keep turning it around and doing the same just have to be a little bit patient just let the heat build up in that coax and the connector there I have got the uh, soldering iron turned up quite high but you still have to be patient and let the heat build up So I've got the solder all the way around that SMA connector so what I'm going to do is let it cool down before I move on to the next stage. Now at this stage what I've done with the uh, soldering iron is uh, just get some solder in there on around the coax and the SMA connector. It's not really a uh, good enough job to actually solder the SMA connector and coax together and uh, to be honest if I really pull this I would probably be able to uh, actually pull it apart so what I'm actually going to do now is use my little pen blowtorch here and I'm going to use it to heat up the SMA connector the coax and reflow the solder that I've put on there all the way around it will work its way into the uh, joint between the uh, connector and the coax and we'll have a really good finish nice and smooth all the way around there you don't have to mess around with any files or Dremel tools to actually finish it off that way now what I've also got here is a little pot with some uh, distilled water in there now this actual SMA connector the dielectric that's in there is designed to take quite a lot of heat because that's just the nature of how you actually uh, connect them up with a soldering iron you have to get a lot more heat into this than you would a normal uh, SMA connector and you probably won't have to uh, cool it down in the distilled water but I just like to and that way I can just uh, cool them down and pop them over on the bench and uh, even when I've dipped in the distilled water there's still a little bit of heat uh, in there and uh, then that heat is enough to actually disperse any water from uh, that's uh, still around the uh, connector and coax itself but if you give it a good shake afterwards you'll find that it's uh, quite dry after about a minute or so so just use the blowtorch then to get some heat into the coax and the SMA connector and it doesn't take long for it to start flowing all the way around there and once it's flowed around dip it in the distal water give it a bit of a shake and then put it to one side to cool down and now it's cooled down here's a uh, close-up shot so you can actually see where that solder has actually flowed and what you've got is a really 
good connection there and it's uh, quite smooth you don't have to get in there with a file or anything like that and as I say you've got a nice flow of solder all the way around in between the uh, coax and the SMA connector there. So I hope you found uh, this video useful then and if you did please give it a uh, thumbs up and uh, I hope it's uh, answered some of the questions that uh, you've been asking about how I actually go about soldering these uh, SMA connectors onto the semi-rigid coax but uh, if there's anything that I've missed you want to ask me something else then please by all means drop a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. So as I said I hope you found this uh, video useful and uh, hopefully you'll join me for the next one. So what you want to do you actually want... <coughs>